Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kayleigh Allen and welcome to my channel. So as you may see from the title of this video, this week's video is how to care for alocasia. Now I am not going to give you care tips on a certain type of alocasia. I'm going to try and give you care tips just generally across alocasia from what I know because I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube and to be honest, a lot of people are just doing care tips for the one plant and I have four alocasia as of very recently and I do find that their care is pretty much the same. I have a lot of notes on my trusty tablet. Also as well, if I seem a little bit like stiff on this video, like I don't really want to move. I am actually in quite a lot of pain right now. I am painkillered up. I have kind of like a, I don't know what it is. It's like a trapped nerve or something and it's going all the way down my spine and all the way down my right arm. I can't do well anything really. So I haven't had much sleep. The use of concealer right now is very, very real. So I'll do my best to try and be relaxed. But if I seem a bit, you know, stiff, that's why. So this video should be useful for you, not only if you have alocasia, but also if you're actually looking to buy alocasia or get into alocasia. This video might actually be a little bit long. Uh, to save everybody the hassle, I've put timestamps here of the different things I talk about if you want to skip things, because if you only want to know about, say, watering, I don't expect you to watch the whole video, if that makes any sense. So I have four alocasia. I think the order I got them in was the stingray, which is here behind me. Then I have big Al that's here behind me. Then I have this Sabrina. And then I think it was a week ago or two weeks ago now, I can't even remember anymore, I got an alocasia from Tropical Plant Company. Right, so my first topic is watering. Now this is something that took me a little while, I'm not gonna lie. Now I actually, <laughs> through trial and error, I, uh, I developed a nickname for these plants and that is basically that they are the eight mile plant. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you've not seen M&M's eight mile, literally you get one shot with one leaf, right? That's the best way to remember this. So when alocasia typically grow, the new leaf stems from the previous leaf. So this leaf here has born to this leaf here. When this leaf here unfurls, it will bear a new leaf from that stem. So if something happens and you lose a leaf, being that they're very, very minimal plants, obviously you don't get a lot of chances with these plants. Whereas even Calathea, even though people might think they're quite hard to care for, I honestly think these are harder because as I say, they are so minimal. And if you underwater it, and you don't get to it in time, you'll drop a leaf. If you overwater it, you'll drop a leaf. Like, it's really, really hard to get it down, but I promise you, once you've got it down and you just kind of know your plant, it's fine, you won't have that problem anymore. So generally with alocasia, I would suggest you let the top two inches of soil dry out, but even then, I don't wanna suggest that as like a gospel way of doing things because sometimes I actually pick the pot up to see if it feels really, really light. I also combine that with using my moisture probe that I literally rave about. If you don't know what a moisture probe is, I'm really sorry, I do not have it with me. That was a big mistake. But it is a probe and you stick it in the soil and it gives you a reading of like one to 10, say, of how wet the soil is. So using my moisture probe, I actually water this when it gets to about two on the moisture scale. So basically dry, but not actually dry. Like there is a tiny bit of moisture left in the soil and that's when I water them. Now, the thing I have absolutely noticed with any alocasia, it does not matter what it is, it is consistent for me. If this alocasia is putting out a new leaf, however often you check this plant, double it. Whenever this plant grows a new leaf, it doesn't really matter what stage it's in, this plant is going to absolutely nuke whatever water you give it, you will know if there is a leaf coming. Even if you haven't even seen it yet, the water consumption will go up. And while this leaf is forming, it's just through the roof. Now I know obviously a lot of plants probably do the same thing. I'm not saying this is, you know, unique to alocasia. However, it is really noticeable with alocasia. If I see a new leaf coming out, I will start probing the plant and checking it pretty much every day or two days because if you just leave it that little bit too long when it's forming a leaf, you're gonna have a disaster. I'm just gonna be honest, it's not pretty. I've done it before. I recommend you actually put this plant in a place that you can see it and that is because when alocasia need watering, I find they do tend to droop their leaves a little bit. I say leaves, the stems, for example. Uh, that's not drooping, that's actually just decided it's gonna face a light that I had on. It's just been sat too long in the same place, I think. So that is why in relation to the watering, I am suggesting that if you want to really nail your care for this, you do put this in eye line in the room. Obviously keep the plant wherever it needs to be in terms of lighting, but just try and make sure you either look at it a lot, pass it a lot, or you know you can just check on it a lot because this 
in my opinion, is the hardest part to get right is the watering. Oh, I also use a uh, filtered water with this. It's a rainforest plant. I wouldn't really want to give it tap water anyway. So I'm gonna suggest you use filtered water for this. Should you fail on watering and you either under or over water? I find this definitely to be the case with over watering. You will get a yellow leaf. Now, usually in my experience, the plant will compromise the lowest slash largest leaf. I feel like alocasia, it is the lowest leaf that will go first. And if you've really over watered it, if it's a tiny leaf, then you will get another leaf on top of that that goes. Just, I guess, just remove it. So to remove a leaf, obviously I'm not gonna remove this. You would take, say this leaf here, this, uh, sorry, this stem, you take a knife, a clean knife, a sterile knife, and just cut down it. Just cut down the side of the plant really, really carefully and it will callus over. That is how I recommend removing leaves. Just do it to the stem. Moving on to light. So in my flat, I only actually have east facing windows. It is quite a dark apartment, flat, whatever you want to call it. My windows are ceiling to floor length. So I do get, it's hard to say, I get a lot of light, but there's also a building blocking us over the street. So maybe it balances out towards a normal window i don't know i prefer to place my alocasia literally like five feet from these windows now really depending on your house and how bright your house is you can probably get away with not doing that but because i only have windows on one side of my house like i only have windows on the front of my flat so like down the sides of the rooms just nothing so i literally have just tunnels of light coming in so that's why i do keep them closer to the window i find these plants will lean quite quickly and they will start to get spindly very quickly if you don't give them enough light so if you think that your plant is starting to do that it's starting to lean it's starting to get spindly then i suggest at minimum rotating it but maybe trying to move it closer to the window across the four plants i have it's hard to say like how their light requirements really differ i find it to be generally the same i think the general rule to fall back on is the greener the plant probably the more light it's going to need so my caladora there is very very green so i actually keep it way behind this camera right in front of the window just in a pot this one at the moment is downstairs near a window and the stingray actually lives next door in front of a window so humidity and temperature they do like it warm i would say they like temperatures just the same as a calathea so in degrees anywhere from i don't know their ideal is probably let's be honest it's about 23 24 degrees 20 degrees is fine 19 degrees is fine i don't think these guys like going much below 15 degrees same with my calathea so i try and keep things as warm as possible but i will get onto that in a moment much like calathea these plants do not like drafts or central heating or anything like that if you don't have a calathea uh, don't keep them anywhere near drafts or uh, central heating because they will not like it they like high humidity i think these guys could get away with 40 percent humidity very easily they're happy for me personally i think they really like being around 60 all my plants seem to enjoy 60 percent i like giving them 65 percent humidity so i guess just use that to your judgment and work out how much humidity you'd like to give them in terms of misting i I actually don't mist mine. I have heard that you can get diseases and things like that on the leaves from misting. So I actually don't mist mine. So I do fertilize these plants, but I, you know what? I generally don't fertilize my house plants across the board very often. I find that they don't necessarily need it. Although it does depend on what medium they're potted in, which I will get onto in a little bit. But I tend to fertilize mine roughly once a month, give or take. I don't keep, you know, a great eye on it or anything. I do use general uh, all purpose house plant fertilizer that just dilutes down but I dilute it to about half of the recommended strength. But whatever you do, whether you fertilize more often than that or not, I do not recommend more than once a month, but just go half strength. Honestly, less is more. If you think it wasn't enough and it didn't do anything, you could add more at a later date. It's better to fertilize less than more. And that actually goes for any plant, so. I don't fertilize these in the winter as well because I feel that they just, a lot of them can go dormant. They do not need the extra, you know, chemicals to be sat in. They're not using the energy, just don't. They don't need it. Honestly, don't give them fertilizer in winter. Water is enough, trust me, water is enough. Okay, repotting and soil. So I find alocasia are one of these plants that do actually like quite tight feet in the same way that Sansevieria seem to like tight feet. Again, it depends on the plant, depends on the mass of the plant and everything else, but they do seem to like being slightly, uh, not root bound, but just not in a really large pot. So this one here, if I just pull in by the stem, which I hate doing, that is in a very small pot for the mass of the plant. Uh, it's fine, there's no root coming from the bottom. Um, it's absolutely fine. And it will be fine, I imagine, until springtime, and then I will repot. Sometimes when you repot house plants, you go for maybe two inches larger. I probably wouldn't, I'd probably go one inch larger on this. 
For soil, really, you could use any good aroid mix or anything that you'd maybe plant a Monstera in. I would argue, in my experience, it is good enough for alocasia. These have different mediums, I will say that now. This one I've bought from a plant store and I have not repotted it yet, so I don't technically know the medium it's in, but it does look extremely well draining. This has in it 50% houseplant potting mix and 50% cactus mix. That's not the best mix for an alocasia. It will certainly do the job and it shouldn't, you know, it should keep root rot at bay but I don't actually recommend that. However, if you are really stuck for potting mix and you don't have, you know, the, the perlite, the coconut husk, all of this weird stuff, if you really think, oh God, I've only got these two things, I recommend doing that. I don't recommend doing 50-50. I'd rather do maybe two thirds potting mix and one third cactus mix. Just because for me, combined with this terracotta pot, it drains far too quickly. I'm watering it every week, pretty much. In the summer, it's like every five days, like it's a little bit too much. In addition to that, there's not really enough nutrients in the soil with that ratio, so you probably would want to fertilize more. I think any good aroid mix would probably work for it. Just make sure it's very well draining. Maybe some sphagnum moss, uh, some coconut husk, and mix that in with a little bit of potting soil. That would be absolutely fine, and it will probably keep the plant a little bit healthier. Some final miscellaneous points on these plants. Not so much with these ones. I do clean the leaves, but certainly with big owl back there. I don't know if you can even see him. Can you see him? Yeah, you can kind of see him. With Big Al back there, I do actually take him into the shower and I wash all of his leaves down with lukewarm water every so often, just because I find his leaves are so, so big. They really, really catch the dust. So in addition to these care tips, I did ask a few of you guys on Instagram while I was basically healing up with my back the other day. And I asked you if you guys wanted me to answer any other questions that you might have had about alocasia and I can just throw it in when I end up recording this video. So you guys mainly asked me about dormancy, easy alocasia to own, and yellow spots on leaves. I think that was the main three. So I had a question on basically how did I avoid dormancy and just generally some information about dormancy and why it might happen. This was a little bit difficult for me and I actually had to go and look it up because for some reason my alocasia have not gone dormant and I find that really, really odd. Like uh, this one here on my stingray is new. Obviously this one's pushing out a new leaf as well. I think I found the answers just based on, you know, the things I've done do seem to correlate with the things that Google says stop dormancy. So I'll go through that now. Uh, one thing that seems to encourage dormancy, I'm talking about winter here, by the way, mainly. One thing that seems to encourage dormancy in winter is letting them dry out a little bit too much. Another reason is if they detect a drop in temperature for, you know, not an afternoon or something, but maybe for a week extended period where the temperature has dropped, that can massively encourage dormancy. When you combine that together with the, the drying of the plant out, it probably will go full on dormant. Obviously the other issue is light. So you do have those three things. So if you're trying to prevent dormancy, it may be a little bit late now, I'm sorry. Yeah, try not to go too under on your watering and try and keep the temperature up. Now I did this, I'll be honest, I've paid a lot of money for central heating. <laughs> I have, and I bought that really good humidifier that I did a review on a while ago. And that is honestly how I've tried to counteract the dormancy and just keep all my plants happy. So I'm currently whacking up the heating to the point where it's about 22 degrees uh, in the rooms and I'm firing off humidifiers at a array of knots. Now, I'm not advocating that. That's possibly quite wasteful. It probably costs a lot of money but it's just, it's the only tools I had available to me. So I don't know if that's what's probably um, prevented the dormancy, but it does seem to correlate with what Google says. As I mentioned earlier, I pushed all my plants closer to the window as well to avoid that. Um, I think it's, well, I mean, it must have helped because we have growth. So someone asked me, and this was another very difficult question because they asked me, I can't remember who you were, I'm so sorry. It was what alocasia are easy to care for for beginners. And this was hard because I class alocasia as being definitely more difficult to care for than other plants, hands down, because of the eight mile rule. And I did actually Google, you know, easy alocasia and nothing came up. So I understand why you're asking. Um, the only thing I can recommend, given the fact that I feel that the care for these guys is pretty much the same, is to pick up a common alocasia. <laughs> I know I do loads of videos on rare alocasia, but honestly, pick up a common alocasia. Pick up the, uh, I think it's, is it the Amazonica or the Poly? Pick up an Amazonica and try your hands out with that. And the reason I'm suggesting for that is, if you, if you <laughs> it up, 
then you can just go buy another one. I don't feel that there is an alocasia that is good for beginners. It goes down to so many things on alocasia, the potting medium, the pot it's in, the type of alocasia it is, how much light it is, whether it's popping out a leaf, it's hard, okay? I found this hard. I wanted to do this video a while ago, actually last year, but I didn't, I honestly didn't feel qualified to do the video and I have adjusted care since then and they're thriving more. So I'm pleased I held off on this video. Just don't go and get a rare one from Rare Plant Index and try that because you really need to get the care down on these things. These things will really test you, honestly. They will test you more than Calathea in some aspects, honestly. If you're an overwaterer, this, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, I did get a question about spider mites very briefly, like, you know, my alocasia forever has spider mites. Honestly, I would suggest that maybe your humidity is a little bit low, not low enough to cause problems like on the leaves on the plant, but perhaps it's just low enough so that it's dry air and the spider mites are just arriving. <laughs> I've never had a problem with spider mites and I don't necessarily do much to these alocasia, but the house is quite humid. I don't know if that's a, you know, a cause of it. Just spray it down with filtered water, just saturate it. Take it outside, put it on the, the ground or whatever and just goad it with a spray bottle because spider mites hate wetness of any kind. So just spray the crap out of it every so often. Just keep an eye on it. This kind of ties back into just keeping it somewhere where you can see it, if that's possible. Uh, and you'll find I think that helps. Someone also asked me about yellow spots on leaves. I think yellow spots on the leaves is usually inconsistent watering. So maybe you've watered it under then over and it's just, it's just, it's inconsistent. <laughs> uh, that can cause the spots on the leaves. Usually on a leaf, if you have brown towards the tip, it's usually either under or over watering. I do find in this case, it's under watering with alocasia, more so than over watering. And if you have brown like all the way around the edge of the leaf, that's usually a humidity issue. So if you see that, same thing for Calathea by the way, if you see brown edging all the way around the leaf, like up these sides, that's probably humidity. If you see it on the tip, in Alocasia's case, for me personally, it's usually underwatering. If there is anything that you think I either have not answered or I've answered incorrectly, then please feel free to say something in the comments. Don't feel that you can't say something. Likewise, if you have a question about Alocasia care, even if it's pertaining to a certain uh, type of Alocasia, like the Zebrina, um, I don't know, a black velvet, a stingray, anything like that, feel free to write it in the comments and I'm pretty sure either myself or somebody else in the comments will help you. I really, really would like on these care videos to establish some sort of community in the comments so that at least if someone goes to a care video for a particular type of plant, they know that there is at least a hub of information there. And in the event that I've got something wrong or somebody knows of a better way to do something, then you can seek help in the comments. I'm just really defensive because I'm not a botanist in any way. Do you know what I mean? I haven't had alocasia that long. Sorry if this video was very long, but I wanted to try and make it as comprehensive as possible. Also, I'm talking about alocasia generally and not one type of plant, so please bear that in mind. I'm gonna go now because I really need some more pain relief and I need to lie down because my shoulder is killing me. So thank you very, very much for watching. Let me know if you'd like care tips on any other plants. Let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see, I guess. And I think that's it. I'm gonna go now. I've kept you too long. I'm really, really sorry. Bye.